Hey, welcome back to Return to Daniel YouTube and Return to Daniel.com ministry. Still got these male diapers. It's 28th of April, 2022. This is my experience. This is what I've gone through. I'm not here to bash anybody in the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or whatever you want to call all those letters community. Man, I, for one, I thought that that was the best thing for me years ago in 2004 after not getting the proper mental health care uh, to deal with my childhood abuse from an alcoholic mother that told me men are horrible, that, that I would never amount to anything, and she would be washing my little penis and saying that my father was evil and wicked and I would never amount to anything. And my gosh, I suffered years of uh, 16 years of uh, insanity and uh, substance abuse and homeless. And oh man, what a horrible existence. And it was only God's grace that I stayed alive. So just real quick before I forget, um, I've been post-op now from my third lower surgery and this right here is called a catheter okay and uh, may, let me make a health tip right there that's fairly light colored urine I'm fairly hydrated most of the world's not I take very good care of myself now whereas I didn't before but I still have a catheter I'm going to have to keep it in for a few more days I might uh, I pray that the little procedure that was done to extend my urethra up onto the base of that new phallus that I have, where I can possibly stand up and not spray urine all over the place, because what a nightmare this has been. So my appeal is to people, uh, you're thinking about getting a sex change, I would say don't do it. Here's why. If you're a biological female, once you get your ovaries ripped out, you'll never have children. You're going to have to take this needle and inject this T, testosterone, into your body every two weeks. It's, it's not brutally painful, but it, you do feel it every two weeks. You do feel that. You're not designed to be doing that. God did not create you that way. In Psalm 139, it says we were perfectly formed in our mother's womb. Okay, and if you're a little boy and you're thinking that you're going to be better off as a little girl, your body was not designed to take estrogen the rest of your life. There's been absolutely no long term studies, to my knowledge. Okay, I, I'm a country bumpkin from Tennessee, but I do have an education. Um, but no long term studies about cross sex hormones does it. People that have this problem of gender dysphoria, do they live shorter lives? I would think that they probably do because when you're giving your body something that it's not naturally meant to have, there's going to be problems. And you're going to have surgery problems. And like I showed you, uh, I've been on male diapers because uh, I didn't have them on the other day. And I went shopping for my wife and all I had was my catheter plugged. And I was leaking urine all over my pants. I'm walking around in a great big uh, store. Uh, and I mean, it's embarrassing. And so the other thing I wanted to share today that's really, really important is, is um, I talked about Psalm 139. Oh, the thing about uh, whether or not there's a God. Now listen to this. You'll follow my logic. There has to be a God because... When God created the, the cow, the cow produces something called casein. It's a protein in the cow's milk that when the baby cow drinks the cow's milk, it doubles in size like in 20 something days or so. Okay. Human beings were not designed to drink cow's milk. What's happened is, and you can research all this, it's a just go to PubMed and type in casein. casein. Um, I think it's K-A-S-E-I-N or something like that. But just type in DuckDuckGo for a search engine. Casein uh, cows uh, hormones or something like that. It should pop up the correct spelling. Human beings are not designed for this casein because 
It gives children allergies and asthma and other problems, digestive problems later in life. I grew up on that stuff. I mean, I grew up on meat and cow's milk and cheese, and I have to take digestive enzymes. But anyway, we're all plant-based now. I drink a lot of water, as you can tell from my urine bag, that it's fairly light-colored. So anyway, I'm taking good care of myself now. But the whole point about being a creator, God designed the cow to make that casein to double the size of those cows, and that's a natural process of life. And so the human being is designed for the mother's milk, breast milk, and then you build the baby's immune system, okay? Now, I don't have any scientific background or degrees. My degree's in business administration, but however, I have been reading the Bible, and in Genesis, God created male and female, and he said it was very good. There's absolutely no word about transgenders being created. This is all man-made stuff. And my friend, for 6,000 years, man has been just falling and falling and falling into a big, huge hole. And for our society to push this transgendered stuff on children in grade school is a gross travesty. Now, I'm not here to beat anybody up in this community. I fell into the deception myself. I did not reveal my childhood abuse. My therapist was an admitted lesbian woman. I did not get any of my childhood abuse delved into until after I'd gone to the surgeon's table. Then it's a miracle of God that I didn't kill myself because I sank into a depression. So I'm going to wrap this video up right now and just plead with you. If you're a little boy or you're a young girl or a young boy, the worst thing you can do to yourself is get on the wrong hormones for your body the way God designed you. Psalm 139, you're perfectly formed in your mother's womb. Okay, God wanted you to be a boy, he would have made you a boy. If God wanted you to be a girl, he would have made you a girl. Girls are given... The uh, caring, loving, nurturing nature. The boys are not given that. I tried to pass out in the world as a woman. And I mean, I here I am a big muscle bound dude. But on estrogen, my muscles atrophied. It was horrendous looking. And then I got back on the testosterone when God told me to detransition back in 2016. And my muscle mass returned in the right place. So I'm pleading to you. You don't want to get on the cross-sex hormones and you want to get mental health therapy and dig into the root cause of your dysphoria. I mean, girls have a hard time uh, with their uh, appearance and they want to change the way they look and stuff. And people go through problems with gaining weight and losing weight and all this stuff. You will become comfortable with your stuff, not with yourself. 98% of people that have this problem, resolve it by the time they're 18 to 20 and they're, okay, I'm a woman, I'm meant to be a woman. And they don't go to the surgeon's table and mutilate themselves. Don't do it. Do you wanna have my problems? I mean, I, on some of my videos, I show the cover image, that big chunk of skin that they took to patch where my new penis is attached to my body. And it's horrendous looking. I mean, I still have a scar there. I'm probably going to have a scar the rest of my life. So that's my plea today. You don't need to go and mutilate yourself. No, 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 no. And, you know, I'm going to keep preaching until either I get shut out by YouTube or whatever. But I'm here just to share my experience. I love you if you're in this process and you had the surgery and specifically... The male, biological male, there's a support group that one of the men, a young man, has created on Telegram. Just search detransition support. And all of those men in that group, they're getting their biological sex rebuilt also. They'll help you through the process. I don't have a lot of time to get in there because I'm trying to provide for me and my wife. But God bless you. Don't cut any of your genitals off. Bye for now.